<clears throat> okay, so behave yourselves. So, um, uh, so uh, recording out, but well, first, uh, actually, first of all, uh, Kate, you're here. Um, did you have trouble logging in uh, just now? No, um, I didn't want to join on my phone. I've got my other work laptop loaded, and um, so I've logged on onto a different laptop. So I just wanted to make sure that I was on the on the right screen, so that I've got the two screens at the same time. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm working off two screens. I'm, I'm going to do it slightly differently because uh, some of the feedback from my my own coach is that I spend too much time uh, pointing to slides or getting it feels like a bit like they're through PowerPoint. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit more uh, inter interactive and uh, more about us than, than showing off my PowerPoint skills, which aren't that great, uh, if I'm absolutely honest. So, so um, look, uh, there were some takeaways. Now I am going to share this one just uh, because I think it's uh, it's going to be uh, relevant. So if I just go, excuse me, um, here takeaways from last week. And uh, Kate, I recognise um, that you're um, kind of uh, you're very welcome, uh, but you're sort of new to this thing. Every Tuesday, um, quarter past one UK, I do uh, I do something like this, and. Um, uh, we were talking about how to present the cell over Zoom uh, last week, and I think both Mifty and um, uh, Andrea uh, were on that, along with uh, along with others. But the uh, the the real point around um, uh, having a successful Zoom call, as we are uh, doing now, is around. Uh, let me just maximise that. There you go. Is around uh, the absence of distractions and. If everything's working for you and doing what you're already doing and you're achieving everything you want to achieve on your calls, don't change any of it. But it's actually about the absence of distractions. That's how you have an effective uh, you have an effective call. And you have to amplify yourself, your your body language, your the words that you're using, that you go up when you're asking a question or down when you're landing a point so there's lots and lots of things going on in order to have an effective, you know, reduce that gap between uh, a, a Zoom call as we are now, video call as we are now, and being in person. You'll never completely mitigate it, but there is a way that you can really reduce it to an absolute minimum. And if you get Wi-Fi problems, as many of us uh, do, so if you've got children running PS4s and all of that, um, then uh, the best thing to do is switch off your camera because the audio is much more important than the video. So you can survive a couple of minutes without video, um, uh, but you couldn't survive a couple of minutes without audio. And then if you've got the uh, budget, uh, great investment, particularly if it's tax deductible, um, consider an HD, most laptops come with an HD webcam these days, so you're probably okay, but an external mic, really really helps so I've, uh, for less than a hundred dollars 100 quid you should be able to get uh, a decent um external mic i use something called a snowball uh then lighting lighting is really important can we really clearly see your face um uh make sure your mic hasn't got any papers over it and that you, there's direct line of sight between your mouth and the, and the microphone fits on your laptop for instance you might have a printout of your presentation and you might be blocking it all off people won't be able to hear you won't build as uh, the rapport that you were hoping for and if you're on camera <laughs> remember that you're on camera um because we've all got horror stories of what we've seen on the other end of our screen that i suspect okay right um what's what's next uh what's it what that okay right I'm not going to do a poll uh, this. I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Um, but what I am going to do is, um, do you do any kind of, and you're welcome to come off of uh, mute uh, in this, do you do any kind of outbound at all at the moment? By, okay, good. So um, if you want to come off of mute, uh, I want this to be interactive. Do you do any kind of outbound at the moment? And if so, what is it? Is it, um, uh, Natalia, there we go. Let's just let Natalia in. Um, is it uh, LinkedIn messaging? Are you sending um, uh, emails? Are you making cold calls? What uh... I I haven't started yet, as we discussed. Um, still quite new to this business area. Um, 
So for me, I've prepared a couple of emails to people that I'm, I know who, who they are. So a couple of things I've done is like I've added my picture to the email signature so that they know who I actually am because they worked face to face with me previously. And um, but they're all drafted emails prepared. So I'm really interested in in sort of some tips and tricks um to get to get started more than more than what I do now to enhance it and kind of a, a new start to, to outbound because I've worked on internal things, pre, uh, you know, a lot of my past, previous career. So that that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, good shout. Thank you, Kate. Um, what, is your, what is your new business, Kate? Uh, print management. Um, so working with um, print distribution to um, support... Anybody who wants to a run of loads of flyers for an event, or if you want some invites to, um, as we discussed last week, Keith, Yunnan's sixtieth, Yunnan's sixtieth party. <laughs> um, but yeah, so working with print management, distribution, um, work with a few different printers, and 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 and. Sort do you of do? Um, do you do small jobs for? Yeah. One second, Andrea. Uh, thanks. But you, you can tie up with uh, Kate afterwards if you like. But we can yeah. focus on. I just want to. Uh, uh, I just want to focus on uh, what we're doing. Very Is that okay? Sorry, cut you off there, Kate. But anyway, no, I'll take. I'll take your point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so there are lots and lots of different uh, outbound methods uh, now, and uh, here we are on uh, video. Um, uh, and we're able to do that from the, the luxury of our own homes, particularly if you have a home with a background that Mechdes has. So, uh, and welcome Natalia, by the way. Um, so has anyone ever made a cold call, a cold phone call? Anyone ever made one of those? Can I just ask you, how, how did you feel, or how do you feel when you're making a cold call? If I may, yeah. Um, you know, my approach of cold call is quite different from from many others. I I don't guarantee that it's any better, Keith. But my um, definition of cold call is more of a targeted um, cold call. So if I'm selling, for example, diapers, I don't sell it to a seventeen-year-old boy. You know. I try to target those who have recently delivered baby or young mothers or stuff like that. So yeah, I'll have less people. I'll have uh, more time to um, organize and, and, and find them, but then it's more targeted. And I use a lot of LinkedIn for that. Yeah. And this is my answer to you. My request to you is I do have to make outbound email yet to my internal customers you know i deal with a lot of account managers a lot of solution professionals and i want to connect with them because i'm from the enabling team helping them sell see so um um, um to all extensive purposes i do not talk to customers directly initially i talk to account manager so i have to sell myself to account manager first and then you know if you could like touch base how we could sell my value proposition to them also would be would be nice but stick to your agenda only if time allows would be thank nice you. to know how i can deal with internal customers thank you i'm gonna go on mute okay welcome chris uh thanks mehdi I'll, I'll do what i can for you um at, as a minimum uh kate and uh, mehdi i will send you a link afterwards to my top three Emails which are cold because Kate, you were suggesting that you know these people, so that's almost a only like very, very minutely. So it is quite cold. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to send you, uh, I'll send you a link which everyone's welcome to, and I'll give you my top three opening sort of uh, because the, the goal of an email is for someone to open it and then act on it, and it's quite a structured way. No Brilliant. surprises, fellow. Sales trainer Chris has just joined us. Um, so welcome, uh, Chris. Chime in. This is meant to be interactive, not a uh, lecture. So the point about um, <clears throat> outbound is there are many ways of being outbound. And they're actually more, it's more about how your prospect prefers to be contacted than it is about your comfort in reaching out to them. Okay. And, and somewhere there's a way to meet because uh, 
in the um in the essence true essence of a cold call you've got no idea how that prospect prefers to engage so it's a bit a bit of a b testing kind of going on all right so with cold calling uh, on the phone in particular i mean there is no finer way to embarrass yourself than than uh than doing it wrong so there is a right way to do it and i told you Chris, uh, to Chris about this, just coincidentally, um, yesterday as a fellow sales trainer and uh, my way of doing it, well, shall we say, uh, not, not Chris's favorite way of doing it. But the important thing is it needs to feel authentic to you. You need to be comfortable with the methodology that you've got. And even, and I think Chris would agree, even sale, seasoned sales professionals have that little knot in their stomach that we often get when they're making cold calls and they do it for a living. So you're always gonna have a little bit of, of, of that, okay? Right, so here's uh, my, my tips. Um, and Mehdi, you touched on this already. It's like, you knew the script. But, so for any email or for any, even on a cold call, it's the same amount of prep. And if anyone wants to chime in, please do so. Is preparation is key. We no longer, um, it used to be, um, I'm gonna show my age now, it used to be uh, given the yellow pages, if that translates in Germany um, and, and, and Chester, uh, but used to be given the uh, the yellow pages and there's your prospect list and you have to open it up and you just smile when you dial. And, you know, it was, it was like a machine gun approach as opposed to these days, it's a sniper rifle. I, I, I believe that. So your preparation, phoning the right, the, the people, that, so as Mickey said, targeted people who's most likely to use your services with the right badge and kate you're going to have to start kind of doing some research linkedin is a wonderful place to do that research now we have all these tools literally at our fingertips so if you're an accountant um and uh and if you're in my accountant commiserations uh but if you're an accountant um then um you, know, you only deal with businesses, I don't know, of uh, less than 50 people, let's say, that's your target market, between one and 50 people, maybe. So you're, you're going to go on LinkedIn and you're going to do a, a, bit, a bit of, re this isn't how to use LinkedIn, but you are going to come up with a, a list, because the last thing you want to do is make one call or send one email, then do a bit of research and then another call and another email. It's, you've got to get a session. So it's worth doing a half day of prep build yourself a list get all those contact details together and then you're going to send a uh, sort of bulk email whether that's 50 or 5000 doesn't really matter but you're going to send a bulk email or you're going to send um you're going to make a half day's worth of uh of phone calls so that you're in the zone and you're in the zone all morning so you've got to think about who who are your um target client who's your target client so we, we talk about pen portraits or avatars, customer avatars, if you like, and you need at least three, I think. Um, so there might be someone called uh, Kate. Uh, no, I want, sorry, there might be someone called Emma, before I get myself in hot water, Kate, who's, um, I don't know, 35, she's a mid uh, middle manager. I, I told you I'd get myself in the hot water, but a uh, middle manager, and uh, she's got these responsibilities, professional responsibilities. She's got a team of 10, let's say, and she's got a certain kind of buying requirement. Or there might be uh, Chris, who's uh, um, just entered the workplace as an apprentice. And, um, you know, we'd argue, is he, assuming he is in our um, uh, uh, target market, then he'll have a different set of buying requirements, still in our target market, but slightly different. And then you might have uh, Andrea, who's different still. So that's the point. You're trying to describe someone. So every time you go to a new list and you make up your, you, you get your research together, are they like Emma? Are they like Andrea? Are they like Chris? That's my point. So, so uh, what are you going to do? How are you going to approach them? So let's just say it's going to be an email and I will send you them. I hadn't prepared email for this necessarily, but I will, if you, uh, I will send you those links to everyone, my top three openers. 
uh, I'll, get, I'll give you the first one now, actually. It's um, the goal of it, if you can imagine an email on your, uh, that comes into your inbox, because you, I'm just going to forward a bit, because I think I've got a decent way of describing this. Uh, there we go. Right. So I'm going to share this, because I think it will help me describe, uh, and I'll appear less on the screen. So there we go. So hopefully you can see this. You've got to understand what's going on in your world, you, what you want to sell. Um, and what's going on in the prospect world? And I guarantee you, they're not set around um, Andrea waiting for your phone call or waiting for your email. So you're going to um, have to uh, put yourself in their shoes. They're going to come. In, an email is going to come in. They're going to see uh, probably someone's name that they've never seen before. So automatically, they're thinking, "Is this spam?" They're not generally quite busy people they're not just going to click on something because they've got a new email you've got to give them a reason to open it and the way you do that is you have a subject line which is interesting it's stand out and it will be uh what's the secret of or you're asking a question and a question that's related to their field so this is what i mean by prep so uh, the answer will not be, do you want to buy some print management uh, solutions? Because uh, that would be remarkable if they clicked on it and said, Kate, I can't, what a day for emailing me today. They, I mean, they, you know, that just doesn't happen. So you've got to put them in the market. So you, that's why you've got to consider going into someone else's um, sort, of, uh, sort of world. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, similarly, with your cold call, um, and I'm going to talk about cold calling at the minute. And Chris, if you want to chime in, you are very welcome to. Uh, but let's um, let I, I just want to uh, exemplify what we're talking about um, here. Um, now, uh, I'm just going to make sure we can uh, validate these um, sound, optimize sound, share sound. Here we go. So um, hopefully on your screens, you can hear this it's about 15 seconds but i just want to show you by example your money mr kimber okay right so now if you haven't seen that before that's um a bit of peaky blinders it's fantastic uh, sales pitch there but point is that's what i mean by grabbing someone's uh, attention no one's there Billy Kimber wasn't there waiting for um, uh, Killian Hughes to uh, to walk in the room. He had to grab their attention. And when you're selling, you are you're providing benefits. And, and actually, no matter what you're selling, you can only provide one or possibly two of two benefits. You are either helping your customers sell more stuff, increase revenue, or reduce costs it's the only two things only you've got to offer if you're really lucky you'll do a bit of both um and so whatever you're selling if you're selling erp systems um then uh then maybe that's a, a, a reduced cost and increased sales if you're an accountant an accountant then i'm hoping you'll also be able to do both by giving some insight into what's going on in the business. If you're in print management, you've got to think about, am I helping them sell more stuff? Maybe, depends what they use the print for, or am I helping them reduce costs? And uh, I tell you now, uh, unless Chris says any differently, um, it's if you're saving people money, especially with uh, inflation likely to go to 18% in January, uh, if you saw the news uh, yesterday, Saving money is a really good thing to be able to take to market just at the minute. Not so much the corporate world, the big corporate world like you're in MACD, but in the, um, I would say, SME market, uh, certainly in the UK. And I've got to believe in Germany where you are, uh, MACD, you know, not totally dissimilar to what we're doing. You're going to be um, saving money is a really good, a really good way to um uh, to approach the market, really. It's going to be very uh, very uh, amenable to that kind of message. Right, so uh, that, that was the point. You've got to grab their attention. So that's the subject line. 
And uh, one of my subject lines, uh, which I think um, I've, uh, I've already alluded to, is this will only take 10 seconds to read. That was, okay, so straight away, people are going to get, okay, it's a cold call um, or it's a cold email. It's only going to take 10, 10 seconds to read. What's it all about? They'll read it, any interest or not. That, that's not the point. The point is, will they open the email? And then you've got to have... Uh, a really concise, succinct text, images, but an email experience that they people will respond to, and a call to action at the bottom. So you're not uh, you have to think about what's the objective of your email. Is it click on the link and buy something? Is it as raw uh, as that and cold and salesy as that, or is it creating an awareness, or is it is it is this of interest? Is the call to action? Let's jump on a Zoom call. Something a little softer. Something a little, uh, should we say, flirty? If you regard um, selling as uh, as almost like organising a date. Is is do you want to buy my product? Uh, Anne Williamson. Check out Anne Williamson online. She's really really good at this uh, online customer online dating thing. Anyway. So that's the point. Anything to add or take away, Chris, or anyone else for that matter? No, I totally resonate with what you're saying, Keith. Uh, I mean, cold calling. I, I used to be a sales coach, still cold call now. In fact, I've just been doing some and I've just been doing some video outreach. So just believe it in the heart of hearts that you're good at cold calling. Nobody really likes it nobody likes receiving them but it's the only mechanism that still exists where you can ask a question you get a response and you get information quicker than you're ever going to get in 10 months of email so don't shy away from it no that's a really good point actually so so it is interactive and engaging if you do it right but there's an, an art there just want to show you something also uh, on um this because this is kind of relevant which is how you get people to pay attention to you as well um, and I think this is not a bad answer. You've got to stand out. So I don't know if anyone's ever received a phone call from a call center. It was obvious it's a call center because there's, um, it's, it's called blindness in the call center uh, term technology, which I don't really like that term. But anyway, there's a period of silence and it's anywhere uh, from a half a second to five or six seconds in fact if it's more than six seconds they they uh they're in breach of the regulations but it's an obvious so anyway someone will phone you up is that mcd oh hi this is uh almost certainly not their proper first name but they'll say it's their first name and now how are you today da, 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 da. and i'm i don't know about you but i'm bored already i just i know it's i'm uh i'm i'm anti because i know it's from a call center I don't mind cold calls if they're done well. Um, and maybe that's just because of my background. But, you know, I don't want best friends. I've got some of those already. Thank you very much. Don't want to talk about the weather. Don't want to talk about how terrible things are. You've got to get to the point. You've got to, you've got me on the phone now. I mean, that's a feat. If you're cold calling, Chris, that is a feat in its own right. If <laughs> you manage to get hold of someone. Uh, so you better, you better be good. And so you better have prepared and you better be, you better be slick and you can. I haven't met anyone on this call, uh, these calls yet, that couldn't get to that place. And you've got to be different. And the differentiated approach for me is, and Kate, I'm going to call you out here, but uh, if, if you would answer your phone now, I'd say, hi, is that Kate? And Kate will almost certainly say uh, either who's that or yes, one of those two. Um, and I'm going to say, Kate, I've got to be honest, bit of a cold call. Have you got 30 seconds? And then you can decide if it's worth continuing. Now, I talked to Chris about this. Chris didn't like this approach yesterday. And, ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said that it's a bit cringy, but I absolutely think <laughs> that it's a pattern interrupt that's going to give you permission to carry on. So um, I, I fully support it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm glad I got this recorded anyway, Chris. So uh, anyway, so uh, I'll put that out as a bit of micro content later on. The point is, you've you've done a couple of things there. You've you've shown up. You've got someone on the phone. That is a feat in its own right. So don't waste it. 
then you're not going to launch into a uh, a best friends type opening statement. You're not best friends. It's going to be short, sharp, pithy, a bit of a cold call. Have you got 30 seconds? I will tell you now, if it's done the right way, and I've done it a few more times than anyone else probably, 99 times out of 100, as, certainly into the 90s, people will say, okay, shoot. And then you better make sure it's a good 30 seconds worth of pithy information. And it might be, I work with two different kinds of clients, those that are moving offices and want to buy new print solutions for their new offices. I'm just making this up, Kate, by the way. Um, or they're putting on a big conference center and we need a big communications program to go around that launch, that, camp, that, that campaign. Don't suppose you're struggling with either of those two things, are you? And then you're waiting for a response and the response is gonna be, yes, no, or, or something in the middle, and then you can respond from there. Now, the moment it goes past 30 seconds, you ought to remind them, we're over 30 seconds, am I okay to keep talking? And then that's a really key bit, bit of feedback for, from your prospect. They will either say, look, I'm interested in this, but I've got my head in a spreadsheet, or I'm in a meeting, or da da da. Okay, Kate, when's a better time to call back? And then make sure you do call them back at that time. That's really, really important. Okay, but what you've got there is you've got the most valuable of all commodities, which is engagement with a prospect. But actually not quite as valuable as a deal, but actually it's, it's up there in terms of cold calling. So it's different. It's refreshingly honest. It's disarmingly honest. And that's why people will appreciate that. And then, I mean, I can't help what offer you've got to make the market. That's your business. Um, but if it's a money-saving offer, I would suggest that the market is very amenable to that kind of thing at the minute. Okay, right. Uh, who's on chat? Uh, right. Okay, yeah, good. Right, okay, so what's, uh, what's next? So any questions so far? Is that, is that all right? Stands out. Ding, 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 ding. Takeaway has got to be accurate. Okay, and so we've done that, making statement structure out down. Okay, right, yeah, let me just, uh, what I've just talked about. Oh yeah, okay, we'll, we'll do this. Let's share this. Right, you all recognize this now. So the pattern interrupt, psychological term, can't remember where it came from, but it works. <clears throat> You've interrupted them, and you know you're interrupting them and you've asked for that commitment. Agreement to proceed, that's called a micro commitment. So if any of you know the ADA principle, attention, interest, decision, action, is that right? Have I remembered that right? ADA, it's a funnel. No, okay, right now. Anyway, the way to go from each of those stages in the digital world is through micro commitments. In the old days, it would be uh, an agreement staircase. Nowadays, we would call that a micro commitment. What will you commit to to go to the next stage? And it might be a meeting, might be meeting for a coffee, might be a Zoom call, whatever it is. Might be sign up for the latest white paper on how to reduce costs in the workplace. And that could, you could, uh, a free bit of information that your company, Kate, could, yeah, if you've done a recent case study on how you reduce the customer's costs. Or Natalia, if you've shown how you've helped someone acquire a company uh, before and saved them money and protected their reputation as well, and you've done a case study or a white paper on that, that's a bit of valuable content which you can you can talk to and which might be of value to your prospect. And if they will click on a link or they say, yes, please send it to me and you can see that they've opened it, then you're starting to build commitment in that relationship. I know that's coming from a bloke. That's probably quite, quite a thing. But anyway, um, and then oh, we've already done that bit. And then next steps. After you've been through that process, what's the next steps? Um, is it is it a no? Don't ever call me again the rest of your life. Make sure, you, in which case, make sure you uh, update your CRM. Um, or is it uh, yes? Let's get a Zoom call. Come off of there. Or is it let's get a Zoom call? or something else, um, but whatever it is, live up to it. Okay, right. 
what's next? Wait, one more prospect. What's it doing? Right. Okay. So on the point of be different, because this is really, really important, because I think the world has changed also over the last couple of years. So a couple of years ago, everyone was sent. My point is, everyone sending emails. Now, if you know that person, that's probably different. Even if it's tenuous and it was some time ago, Kate, you have quite a distinctive surname. So people probably will remember that. Mine also, that helps me. And I've been around a long time as well. So um, that kind of helps too. That's a differentiator in its own right, actually. So if, uh, if, if you have uh, an email, by all means, if it's a good one and it works for you, keep using it. I'm going to encourage you, though, to think about uh, if you're using LinkedIn, and we are all using LinkedIn, about recording a 30 second video message to send to someone. And the reason why, and uh, if anyone wants to, uh, now some people are going to be filled with dread when they hear uh, me saying that. Some people are going to go, that's interesting, tell me more. I'm going to assume the latter. Um, recording videos, uh, I've got to be honest, I'm just going to have to get over that hurdle of, God, I can't imagine myself doing that. I'm not a mindset coach. No, a few, but I'm not a mindset coach. Sometimes we just got to get over ourselves. Uh, but if you would, if you're prepared to send uh, a video message to, let's say, a sibling or a, re a relation, someone or, who, or a close friend, um, then just imagine that you're doing that to your prospect, who you want to be your next best friend anyway. So that will get you in the comfort zone, if you like, where you're more comfortable making that. And then you're effectively recording your your um, 30 second call, which is going to be pithy and concise. You're recording it into a message. Hopefully you're using their first name as well because you've done your research. It's a very targeted. You're not going to be able to send that to anyone that you haven't uh, connected to. I don't think, uh, Chris, um, I think you'll need to be connected to them uh, first. And there's a whole bit of psychology around doing that, which I won't go into. But I'm going to encourage you to be open to do that. Uh, and I think it does a couple of things. First of all, you get a relationship with it, but it's much easier to have a relationship with someone on video uh, than it is on a uh, on an email. Now, was it you, Kate, that was saying you've got a picture on your email? Was that you, or have I uh, have I misremembered that? Okay, right. So, so that's helpful actually if you've got a photo of yourself. On your email it kind of that goes with the email goes with the contact details and then you you you've um uh, yeah okay andrea hi are you uh yeah just one thing keith um yeah. i've been listening to a lot of music recently with and really enjoying because there's yeah. so much and it would it be okay to have three seconds of music at the beginning because i think that might be nice i don't even know where to go with that andrea um the uh, uh it, 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 what could you do in three seconds uh, sorry like, uh, what could you do in three seconds i wouldn't have thought so is my uh off the top of my head uh response to that unless uh, unless I listen yeah. i i'm sorry is it okay I only said three seconds because I know yeah. that it takes me one second to say nam myoho renge kyo. It would be very, but I'm not selling my religion. So I'm not saying that I'm think, thinking of something else, but I could say nam myoho renge kyo, nam myoho renge kyo, nam myoho renge kyo. That's a Buddhist greeting, but I'm not selling Buddhism. <laughs> Do you know, I prepared for almost everything on the call, Andrea, but uh, that is uh, something <laughs> that I uh, is I'm going to honestly say is. I've got here. ADHD, etc. Okay. Uh, do you know you can argue that with almost anyone else apart from me because I have it too. But I I uh, I um I accept that. Now, if you are pitching, I'm going to do something with this. If you are pitching to someone of uh, a similar mindset, 
because you want to do something for their Buddhist temple, something like that, it's, and it's on point, why not? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I'm glad we've cleared that up. Thank you. <laughs> me, me too. I'm going to go away for a lie down in a darkened room afterwards, Andrea. <laughs> <You've>, uh, <coughs> thank you for that. Okay, right. Uh, four minutes to go. Please, someone give me a different question um, if you've uh, if you've uh, got one. Uh, I can't believe no one has, although I, I am. I get the silence. So, what's the point? The point is, if you're going to go do outbound, you've got to be different. Don't be their best friends. Um, you want a message that's going to land or resonate with your target market. And speaking of target markets, you've got to decide what it is. If it's SMEs, less than 50 people, or even less than nine people, because that's where your sweet spot is, whatever it is, understand, get yourself three avatars, Emma, Chris, um, and, uh, and Andrea, whoever it is, what do they look like? What are their interests? Why would they buy from you? That's where you've got to get yourself down to. Okay. Um, and agree on you're you're so diplomatic, Chris. Uh, you've raised your hand. For zoom etiquette, I'm just curious, Keith. People give up too quickly sometimes in sales. How many times do you think we should keep trying before we should stop? Uh, ooh, that's a really good question. Now there is research on this. So I'm interested to know if you've got an answer to this but it's somewhere between five and seven something like 70 percent of all salespeople give up before four attempts to contact the other party um I, I, i'm very happy if you want to fill in the dots on that uh, chris uh no I i've definitely read that i i think i'm i'm hearing currently it's plus seven even as many as 12 but you've got yeah. to try different approaches with that email video voice social because everybody's you've kind of got to circle the wagons and once they know they're surrounded you've you kind of got them yeah you're absolutely right in fact we had an infestation of pigeons during lockdown because there was no one else there to you know i was really tempted to round some of them up and start using them with little messages tagged to their legs to send off because that's about the only medium by which I couldn't get hold of some people. Okay, <clears throat> right. Anyway, I'm here all week. So uh, we are here. It's almost two o'clock. So thank you for your time. Was that of any use at all? It wasn't I was just going to put a note in. I would, sorry, man. All right, so I, Kate. Uh, I, I was going to put a note in because I'm just literally need to drop off now. But um yeah i think there's a couple of takeaways for me i think the email for, for the subject email in the, the subject line i think that's really really useful um and the the approach to opening the conversation of cold calling and just being genuine just you know if you live by the truth and, and you and that's how you set up you know then um then i think that's that's it's quite comforting to know that it's a, it's a technique that works as well. So, you know, I'm ringing you because I am going to try and sell you something, but actually give me an opportunity because what I want to do is save you some money. Bang, yes. kind of, you know, situation. So I think being yourself, and I think that's really, really helpful. So um, thank you. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. Um, uh, is there anything else? So it is that time. So I, I understand if you need to uh, jump off now. Listen, I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to follow up with the message because we are on time. But if there's anything you want to talk about next Tuesday at quarter past one, I'm after subject. So if, if you want to talk about sales related, I don't know, object, objection handling, something like that, uh, then come back to me. I'll send you drowning in sweat here. Sorry about that. Um, but um, I'm going to send you across the uh, recording. And uh, Andrea, thank you mate, for making this so entertaining today. Bless you for that. It's uh, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. I, I, I've got my hot water bottle in case. Okay, in, ca in case. <laughs> and, and, and a jacket, an extra jacket. Okay, right. Okay. Are, you, are you based in the Arctic Circle? Uh, <laughs> because, <laughs> because I can tell you now. God, it's like Dubai out here. Anyway, so um, anyway, listen, great, great fun. 
uh, uh, can honestly say that. Thank you very much, Chris. I can tell you they're not normally like this, but um, and uh, but anyway, Andrea, thank you so much. Natalia, thank you for spending time. I'll send you the recording and we'll make up a subject for next week. Take, take care, everyone. I'm off to lie down now. Cheers. Bye.